The Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure will come to order. And I hope all members and, and uh, visitors are in good spirits this morning. For a long while, I wasn't. It took me an hour and a half to drive in. I could come faster on my bicycle, 17 miles from Potomac. But I would just uh, make an uh, observation that the only benefit of sitting there for that long a time on the southbound George Washington Parkway was as I looked across the river to see if the Maryland traffic was doing any better. It wasn't. There came a magnificent image, our national symbol, a bald eagle just floating majestically just a little ahead of the traffic sort of laughing at us, but it was a majestic scene. I couldn't help sharing that with everyone. Um, today we uh, will consider the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009 and the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2009. We will also consider the uh, 2010 budget views and estimates of the committee. Now the chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Costello, for a motion. Mr. Chairman, pursuant to Rule 1A1 of the Rules of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, I move the Chairman be authorized to declare recesses during today's markup. Questions on the motion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the motion is agreed to. Our, uh, before we take up the first order of business, I just want to uh, uh, give a little progress report on our portion of the Recovery Act. Last Friday, uh, Mr. DeFazio and I signed letters to uh, 600 entities, governors, commissioners of transportation, metropolitan planning organizations, the uh, uh, state and, and local and regional transit authorities and public facilities authority managers, those who manage the state revolving loan funds, restating the terms of the Recovery Act and the, and the provisions that we had from this committee that were part of the House passed bill that go beyond the final requirements of the Recovery Act for reporting and for uh, accountability. And I said very clearly uh, in, in conference calls, in hearings in September and October and, and in January, I made it very clear that, the, that our combined bipartisan purpose was to have transparency and accountability, and we set a goal of 90 days for the first half of the highway funds to use it or lose it, commit it to projects, award bids or obligate the funds, and then for a successive 30-day period of reporting on contracts awarded, payroll, job descriptions, work underway, location where that work is performed, and then we will report that information. And I set the date of, August, of, of April 3rd for reporting uh, to the committee and told them exactly how we expect that information to be reported by computer flash drive. And, and uh, we will, uh, unfortunately, we will be in recess on that uh, beginning that day, but as soon as we return from recess, we'll, staff will have had on both sides of the aisle will have had opportunity to evaluate that information, and then we'll hold a public hearing in full committee with reports from the several subcommittees that have uh, respective jurisdiction over our portion of the uh, of the recovery funds. Uh, I reiterate that we intend to stay on top of this issue and make the transparency and accountability very, very clear and, and uh, with 30-day reporting periods. Uh, <clears throat> our first order of business is consideration of H.R. 1262, the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009. I call up the bill and ask unanimous consent that the bill, as approved by the Subcommittee on Water Resources and Environment, be considered as read and open to amendment at any point. Without objection, so ordered. Now recognize the chair of the subcommittee, Ms. Johnson, to explain the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I encourage my fellow members uh, to 
committee members to join me in the support of the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009. This legislation passed through my subcommittee yesterday and was approved uh, by that panel by a voice vote. I urge members of the full committee to do the same. The legislation contains five titles. These include the reauthorization of the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, uh, legislation, a pilot grants program for alternative water source projects, an authorization of the sewer overflow control grants program, the sewer overflow right to know program, and a reauthorization of the Great Lakes Legacy Act. Each of these titles consist of a piece of legislation that passed through the House last year, and unfortunately the Senate was unable to uh, do the same. Subsequently, Four, or five, uh, four of the five uh, made it to the President's desk. The nation's water resource needs are immediate and pressing. Central to these needs is the deteriorating state of the nation's water infrastructure. The Environmental Protection Agency has stated that, stated that without significant improvements to the nation's wastewater treatment infrastructure, we face the real risk of falling behind on much of the progress we made in cleaning up the nation's waters. In addition, the Environmental Protection Agency and other, others estimate a shortfall between $300 billion and $400 billion over the next 20 years for necessary wastewater infrastructure improvements with an annual funding gap of between three to $11 billion over current expenditures. Title I of the legislation uh, before us would reauthorize the Clean Water Revolving Fund program. It is intended to address the nation's water infrastructure needs and reaffirm the federal commitment towards meeting the goals of Clean Water Act. And it authorizes a federal grant program for capitalizing straight state re revolving funds at $13.8 billion over the next five years while providing uh, states with additional flexibility in the types of projects they finance. The bill also provides uh, that states with increased flexibility with the financing packages they offer to cities and local communities, including principal forgiveness, negative interest loans, or whatever other financing mechanisms might be necessary to assist communities in meeting their water quality infrastructure goals. And this is critical in these ec this economic times. Title II of the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009 provides funding for a pilot program for alternative water source projects. This program provides $250 million in grant funding for a variety of projects such as the water reuse and recycling. Title III of the legislation uh, reauthorizes the sewer overflow control grant program. This section provides $1.8 billion over the next five years in grant funding for states to control combined sewer overflow. These sewer overflows are a primary cause <coughs> of water impairment. Title IV of the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009 creates a sewer overflow right to no program. And this legislation amends the Clean Water Act to require owners and operators of publicly owned treatment works to notify federal and state agencies, public health officials, and the public health and the public of the sewer overflows. This call for increased transparency of public health related information, and that is something I urge you sure to, to support. And finally, Title V of the legislation completes some unfinished business in last year's Great Lakes Legacy Act. The Legacy Act provides funding for the cleanup of contaminated settlement around the Great Lakes. This year's legislation reinstates the House approved authorized funding level of $150 million per year uh, for the cleanups. And this figure was unfortunately pared down to, to previous authorized levels of $50 million a year. During negotiations with the Senate, uh, during the negotiations with the Senate, increased funding will not only allow for a faster cleanup of these contaminated sites, it will send 
a clear signal to both congressional appropriators and the administration that we are committed to this task. Members of the committee, it has been over 20 years since Congress last authorized appropriations for the Clean Water Revolving Fund. It is time for the committee and the Congress to complete this task of sending this and the other important provisions in the bill to the President. Uh, please join me in supporting the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009. Thank you. I thank the gentleman for, and for her explanation. I thank her for her splendid work as chair in the 110th Congress and shepherding all these bills, not only through committee, but through the House. They all passed overwhelmingly. Uh, chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Micah, ranking member. Well, thank you, and uh, let me associate first of all my remarks with the chairman um, on his uh, intent and uh, announcement that uh, we'll very closely monitor stimulus monies and uh, we'll work with uh, the majority side to make certain that those funds are appropriately expended and also if money is not expended that we find a way to get it to districts that can use it as soon as possible. Um, I, I just have a couple of comments and then I'd like to yield to Mr. Bozeman, our ranking member. Uh, I think this, this combines five bills and uh, we work together on the bills and I think for the most part these are uh, very good uh, water resources uh, measures uh, that uh, deserve support. Um, I voted for, as I recall, I voted uh, against one of the measures, which is, uh, which is modifications to our state revolving fund. Uh, and my, my issue there, of course, was the uh, uh, prevailing wage and, uh, uh, provision. Uh, not so much that I uh, oppose prevailing wage. I think that um, today in mo almost uh, all major entities, um, prevailing wage is accepted and uh, it, it should be adhered to. My concern then and my concern today in that measure is that um, there are 18 states that will be negatively affected by it. Many people on both sides of the aisle will, will be affected. Uh, in an adverse manner, and some of those cho states have chosen not to uh, adhere to some of the, the federal uh, requirements. Well, we, we don't have this requirement in, in place right now, but we'll, we'll be putting it in place. Uh, it will drive the costs of projects up, and then second for them, and then secondly, uh, the place where it will hurt the most is in rural areas or areas that have uh, marginal, uh, marginally financed projects. And when you run the cost up um, in, a, an, in an area that, um, again, uh, already has uh, uh, problems financing projects, um, you, you impose a penalty uh, that's unwarranted in my belief, and also you may make that project uh, uh, impossible for those uh, rural uh, or uh, economically disadvantaged uh, folks. So I do have that problem. I do want the legislation to move forward, uh, but I'd be glad to work with uh, the majority and hopefully we can uh, resolve that problem. If I may, could I... Uh, could I yield the balance of my time to our ranking member, Mr. Bozeman, and finish up our side? Thank you, Mr. Micah. H.R. 1262, the Water Quality Investment Act, reauthorizes the Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund and provides almost $14 billion over five years for low-interest loans to communities for wastewater infrastructure projects. In addition, H.R. 1262, the Water Quality Investment Act of 2009, extends the pilot program under the Clean Water Act for alternative water source projects, reauthorizes grants to help communities address the widespread problem in our community of sewer overflows, requires that communities monitor for potential overflows in their sewer systems and notify the public whenever a release would threaten public health and safety, and reauthorizes the Great Lakes Legacy Act. Our nation's quality of life and economic well-being rely on water, on clean water. 
Our nation has invested over $250 billion in wastewater infrastructure to provide adequate wastewater treatment so we can keep our waters clean. This investment has provided significant environmental and public health benefits and contributes over $300 billion of economic benefits to the nation each year. The challenge to continue providing clean water remains as our existing national wastewater infrastructure is aging, deteriorating, and in need of repair, replacement, and upgrading. Some of the wastewater infrastructure across America is more than 100 years old. These pipes and other structures need to be replaced. Treatment plants built in the 1970s need to be upgraded to address aging infrastructure and new environmental regulations. The nation needs to invest in projects to improve water quality. Unless we act, we could lose the significant gains in water quality that have been achieved over the last 35 years. We must breathe life, in, life into partnerships using the resources of federal, state, and local governments, the private sector, and local ratepayers. No one sector will be able to carry this responsibility alone. We must embrace innovative solutions for increasing investment in our wastewater infrastructure to ensure that we will continue to keep our waters clean. I am pleased with the, the GAOs uh, will be looking into alternative financing methods, including public-private partnerships that might be useful to communities looking for helpful options. We look forward to their report. Unfortunately, this bill contains a major concession to the labor unions that has nothing to do with clean water. While I agree with the, the goal of the bill, I am disappointed that uh, language has been included in H.R. 1262 that requires Davis Baking prevailing wage rates to be used for all projects receiving any money from a state revolving fund. We have a number of members who are concerned about the expansion of Davis Baking prevailing wage requirements that are a part of H.R. 1262. Prior to 1995, only the initial federal seed money into the state revolving funds was subject to Davis-Bacon requirements. The law has never required that the Davis-Bacon prevailing wage rates apply to the other money in the state revolving fund. However, in a major expansion of the application of the Davis-Bacon requirements, H.R. 1262 makes the federal prevailing wage rates apply to contracts using state matching funds, community loan repayments, and interest on money earned on the state revolving fund. In addition, the way in which Davis-Bacon federal wage rates have been calculated around the country uh, it has been suspect and criticized for decades. The GAO office, the, the IG, and the Department of Labor have found that the data on which the prevailing wage rates were based were unreliable. Other studies have shown that rural communities, as well as the disadvantaged and minority contractors, were especially hurt by the application of Davis-Bacon prevailing wage. I'm not a supporter of Davis-Bacon because it will make clean water projects more co cost more. It will especially hurt small and disadvantaged communities who are trying to clean up their local waters, and it will force states that do not have their own prevailing wage rate law to adopt the expensive federal Davis-Bacon requirements. While I remain genuinely concerned regarding the adverse effects that the Davis-Bacon prevailing wage requirements will have on jobs and clean water, I support the legislation on balance. I want to thank Chairman Johnson and both of our staffs for their hard work in bringing this bill forward. I yield back. Thank the gentleman for his uh, comments. Uh, do other members wish to be recognized on the uh, pending measures on water? Mr. Chairman. I raise a hand. I can't. There she is. Edwards. Oh, there's Ms. Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I rise today to offer an amendment that I'll withdraw immediately um, to Title III dealing uh, with... We're not ready. We're not in the amending process yet. Okay. If, if oh, I apologize. to make a statement at this point... Oh, new at this, my apologies, that's right. apologies no, Mr. That's, Chairman. That's right. Everybody learns. That's how you learn. Um, Mr. Mr. Shar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, I uh, speak to uh, support the excellent work that's been done on this bill before us. Um, I appreciate and respect the comments uh, from minority members, but I do disagree strongly uh, about concerns about uh, Davis-Bacon provisions in the bill. Uh, from my work at the local community level where I have heard similar arguments and have uh, opposed them. Um, at a time where workers and families are hurting and our economy is in crisis, we need to support good wages for working people and working families. These wages, as I think folks know here, are set based upon prevailing wages 
in a community. In some cases, they're not, they're still quite low. Uh, so I rise to support uh, those provisions in this bill that uh, support good wages for important water projects that will be done. And, and candidly, Mr. Chairman, uh, the lesson that I've always learned is you get what you pay for. And uh, we, at this time, need to support good wages for this important work. Thank you. I thank the gentleman from Michigan. Uh, other members wish to be heard? Mr. Chairman. Gentle gentlewoman from Michigan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And let me just uh, echo some of the comments that have been made, my colleague from Michigan. You know, our principal advocacy of all of us, I think, in the Great Lakes Basin is uh, water quality in the Great Lakes and protection of the Great Lakes. Well, I always, we always like to say it's 20 percent or one-fifth of the entire freshwater uh, supply of the entire planet, not just our basin. So I'm very, very pleased uh, with um, rolling all of these various bills into uh, one here. I think it's, uh, it's excellent work, and uh, certainly in regards to the state revolving funds, uh, will be very, very beneficial uh, for our, uh, our basin there. Uh, we've seen, uh, unfortunately, a, a continued uh, uh, incidents of combined sewer overflows that are getting into the Great Lakes following our, our water or contaminating our water. I appreciate the Great Lakes uh, Legacy Act uh, inclusion here and certainly the um, sewage overflow notification as well is, is very important and uh, I am a, a proud supporter of Davis Bacon so I just want to uh, say I'm delighted with this bill and looking forward to uh, uh, voting it out of committee and onto the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentlewoman. Others wish to be heard on the uh, amendment. Uh, Mr. Duncan. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'll be very brief. Uh, I had the privilege, of course, as you know, of chairing the Aviation Subcommittee for six years and then following that for six years chairing the Water Resources and Environment Subcommittee. And I can tell you I learned during that uh, uh, second chairmanship of the Water Resources that uh, uh, there's probably no part of our infrastructure more taken for granted than our wastewater and clean water systems in this country. And yet uh, people would realize how very, very important those uh, uh, those parts of our infrastructure are if they were neglected and totally uh, went uh, out of um, control on us. And so uh, there's, there's also probably no part of our infrastructure, though, that needs more work than our wastewater system. And so I want to commend uh, Chairwoman Johnson and Ranking Member Bozeman. I do sh share some of the concerns expre expressed by Ranking Member Micah, but uh, uh, this is a good bill and a very good thing for this uh, committee to do, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your work on this and for giving me this moment to speak. Thank you. I thank the gentleman for those very, very thoughtful observations. There's no question about it. Even in this Washington area, if you're uh, driving uh, in during the morning or out during the afternoon rush hour, you're, almost every week there is a report of a water main break. And, and the same situation repeats itself all across the country because of water lines and sewer lines were put in 70, 80 years ago, and they're wearing out, like my hip. It just wore out and got a new one. And I eventually, you have to replace all that infrastructure. Uh, yeah, I got a 45-year hip. I'm, uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, the gentleman is absolutely on, on track, but we, what we did was combine these five bills that passed the House, overwhelming votes, in the hopes that the Senate would act more expeditiously instead of just thinking about them as they did. They gave it a long meditation. They might have gone on a, on a retreat or something to think about it for a while, but that other body just simply, they're pretty good on judges and on on uh, ambassadors, but they're not very good on substantive legis legislation, and, and, the, and the last election didn't make it, things any different. They're not ready to move any faster. So uh, I think that we'll make it easier for them. They can do it all in one bill instead of doing five. Five is heavy lifting in the other body. Um, and we also have uh, four billion dollars in the Recovery Act for state revolving loan funds. Uh, two billion of which is in grant money, and the other two billion is in loan money. And we also have uh, authority for principal forgiveness and negative interest loans, both in this package and in the uh, uh, and in the recovery uh, legislation. So we have uh, ten minutes to go on this vote uh, on the floor. I hope we can uh, move on to uh, uh, to consideration of amendments on the bill. Uh, hopefully through to conclusion and then move to the aviation bill. 
All statements by members will certainly be included in the record. The gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Lotta. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with that, uh, I do have a state written statement that I'd like to include in the record for, in the interest of time, not reading it uh, at this time since we do have votes. Turn off those pagers. We've already announced and we can see it up there. We don't need to know. It's, these are routine votes. Uh, I'm sorry. Ex excuse me. I uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, uh, I, I have a written statement I'd just like to uh, submit for the record uh, because in the interest of time since we do have the votes coming up. Thank you. The uh, bill is now open for amendment, and I have an amendment at the desk. Ask unanimous consent be considered as read. Without objection, so ordered. Uh, this is uh, a technical amendment. We discovered in, in uh, review of the bill that uh, reference to uh, application of Davis Bacon was made in two places, one of which was unnecessary. Uh, and simply by, by legislative language incorporating a previously enacted provision uh, and it was superfluous to the bill. So uh, my uh, technical amendment would uh, uh, correct the uh, duplication and retain the application of Davis-Bacon in uh, Section 602B16 of the Act. Is there any question that anyone wish to be heard on the concur amendment? Concur in the amendment. The gentleman from Florida concurs in the amendment. Questions on the amendment, those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Are there other amendments to the bill? Mr. Mack, gentleman from Florida. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, the amendment will be considered as read, and the gentleman is recognized in support of his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, also thank you to the uh, ranking member, uh, Mr. Micah. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to offer an amendment today. Uh, I cannot sit back and allow this committee to mark up legislation including Davis-Bacon provisions without expressing my extreme disappointment. That is why I am introducing an amendment to strip all Davis-Bacon prevailing wage provisions from this bill. This bill expands the Davis-Bacon provision by forcing any project funded even in part by the state revolving loan fund to be subject to the <laughs> prevailing wage requirements. In 1987, the Clean Water Act stated that Davis-Bacon rates would only apply to contracts where direct federal dollars were used. This increased costs from the expanded application of Davis-Bacon translate into fewer projects, fewer jobs, and less progress towards providing clean water. This policy is a throwback to failed Depression-era economic policy. This is fiscal irresponsibility. Uh, we need to make certain that our country has safe, accessible, and modern infrastructure that we foster a competitive environment that enables businesses to hire the workers they need to meet these job goals. In short, Davis-Bacon means fewer jobs and fewer workers at a time when we want more people to have more opportunity. I would hope that this Congress would once and for all eliminate this antiquated barrier to job creation in the private sector. Well, I appreciate the gentleman's observations, but uh, contrary to uh, uh, not what the gentleman said, but what, to, uh, uh, what are generally uh, misunderstood percep uh, perception, perceptions of Davis-Bacon that generally do not reflect its reality. Uh, Davis-Bacon does not set union wages, does not set negotiated wages. It is a process by which the prevailing wage in uh, an area is determined. States make that determination. The federal government does not. Prevailing wage differs from state to state. Laborers in the uh, gentleman's district are paid seven dollars an hour or so. But in uh, uh, further north in Iowa, they can be paid up to 16 and 18 dollars an hour. Prevailing wage. Wage that is paid, look, this is an average of wages paid. Not union wages, but an average of wages. And uh, uh, this state's rights provision goes back to 1931, while Herbert Hoover is given a bad rap for the Depression. Uh, we have to recognize him for two things. Aviation safety, which he initiated as Secretary of Commerce, and the Aviation Safety 
laws that are in place, federal air regulations, and all began with, uh, with his uh, uh, secretariat. And, uh, and then while he was president, on March 3rd, this might be the anniversary week, I appreciate the gentleman offering the amendment this week, is when uh, Herbert Hoover in 1931 signed what we know today as the Davis-Bacon Act, promoted by two Republican members of Congress. Davis, a senator, and Bacon, a member of Congress from Long Island, New York. <laughs> so there's no reason for Republicans to vote against this. It's a very good Hoover-era uh, measure to, uh, to protect contractors. Now, I won't go any further into the history of it because uh, I've done that already, uh, and uh, I will withhold further comment. Do others wish to be recognized on the amendment, gentlemen? Uh, from from Long, Long Island, in whose district the uh, issue arose originally. It was a federally funded hospital being built on Long Island, and the contra <coughs> excuse me the contractor uh, complained to the uh, then uh, Secretary of Labor, Mr. Davis, uh, that uh, a, a scab contractor had come in from Alabama, pitched tents on the property, and uh, and brought in under paid labor that undercut his workers and his contract. He should have been awarded this contract. And, that, and, and, and uh, Secretary of Labor Davis agreed, but he couldn't get anything done during the uh, uh, then uh, uh, administration. So he left labor, ran for Senate, was elected, and along with the local congressman, a Republican, Mr. Bacon, sponsored the Davis-Bacon Act, and Hoover signed it. Oh. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Yes, Chairman. I yield to the, Mr. Uh, Micah. If I might, uh, in the interest of time, we do have an agreement um, for the gentleman to withdraw his amendment at this time. We could get into this debate at this time, but we do have less than five minutes for a vote. So rather than everyone, uh, we've, we've had two sides presented. If we could uh, uh, proceed uh, and uh, recognize the gentleman for withdrawing that. And then uh, we've also agreed to try to, if, if this is going to be considered, that it go to rules and we, the whole House get to debate on it. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I, uh, uh, after talking with uh, the chairman and the ranking member, uh, have agreed to um, withdraw the amendment uh, with the stipulation that both the chairman and the ranking member will help uh, help me move this to the floor because I do think it's an important debate and uh, uh, the prevailing wage issue and the uh, Davis-Bacon uh, is an important issue that I think members and the public need to hear the debate on both sides so they can have an informed decision. The gentleman's correct, and that is what this body is about. It's a deliberative body. We ought to deliberate these matters. The gentleman is entirely within his rights to offer the amendment here or on the floor, and I will protect and defend the gentleman's right before the Rules Committee to uh, offer that amendment. And with that, I, uh, I move to... Uh, Without objection, the gentleman's amendment is withdrawn. Uh, the gentlewoman from Maryland, Ms. Edwards... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise today to offer an amendment to Title III that I will uh, also withdraw. It's to the controlling green grants, um, green infrastructure grants. The, uh, does the gentlewoman? If I would also ask unanimous consent that the amendment be considered as read. Without objection, so ordered. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you. And I know, I know that we have to go to a vote, and I plan to offer an amendment and withdraw it uh, for stormwater runoff as one of the largest sources of water pollution in the country. And I will work with the, uh, with the chairman and the, the committee to ensure that we provide green infrastructure uh, grants um, so that we can deal with the pressing problem in this country of stormwater um, runoff. And I know that we're going to a vote, and so I will conclude there and withdraw the amendment. Without objection, the amendment is withdrawn. Do other members have amendments or wish to be heard? Uh, if not, the uh, chair recognizes Chairwoman Johnson for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, pursuant to Rule 1A1 of the Rules of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, I move that the chairman be authorized to declare recess during today's makeup. 
Mr. Without Parker. objection, so ordered. The chair oh. is recognized for a motion on HR 1262. Okay, we're have, we have finished. Okay, I recommend then that we report this uh, bill as amended and approved and reported favorably to the House floor. Questions on the motion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. The bill is amended, is approved, and ordered reported favorably to the House. We will uh, recess for the pending three votes and resume uh, within 10 minutes after the last vote.